So, in October of 2017, there are a couple of articles in JAK, the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, on uh, cardiovascular imaging involving colchicine therapy. Now, again, October 2017, why colchicine therapy for plaque? Uh, isn't colchicine that old, old uh, drug that you give for gout? Um, we'll talk about it in just a minute, but, but first a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R, uh, with PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, cancer, disability prevention. Um, <clears throat> yes, an old gout medication is being looked at for heart attack and stroke prevention. Now, why would that be? So, colchicine is given to decrease the inflammation associated with gout. About a year ago, in June of 2017, um, I've done a couple of videos on this, but just a reminder, a fellow named Paul Ridker uh, published the Cantos trial in which, uh, sure enough, People in a global trial got a major decrease in heart attack and stroke from anti-inflammatory medications. So they got, that got the cardiology uh, world buzzing again on this issue. And what's interesting is uh, he's been preaching that gospel for 20 years. That information's been out. It's been available. If you read the book, uh, Beat the Heart Attack Gene by Brad Bale, uh, Amy Dunneen, they've been going around the country trying to get it's almost in a tent meeting kind of environment, trying to get people to understand this. So anyhow, and if you look at the YouTubes after that announcement from Cantos, you had leaders in global, global leaders in cardiology saying, we've got a whole new um, thing to look at. Ken Nissen, who's a leader in uh, cardiovascular imaging, was saying this. You've got a, no, a whole new place to look at for prevention and it's inflammation. So anyhow, <clears throat> whether you, you notice some irony and sarcasm there or not, here, the, the thing is, yes, it's becoming recognized, even by mainstream, that, our, that inflammation is the major cause of heart attack and stroke. Inflammation of plaque. I've shown this on a couple of other videos. This is a, a schematic diagram of inflammation of the plaque in an artery wall. This is a relatively healthy section. This is as you progress into more and more inflammation. You have um, full-blown necrosis or uh, dead tissue here which can spew out of the plaque. If it does, it can form a clot. Clot is what kills you. This is caused again by white cells or the, infl the inflammation process is caused by our immune system. We're taking friendly fire. Now back to those studies, um, <clears throat> here's a, uh, there are a couple of them. Uh, let me cover uh, some of the basics on the two studies. Um, they basically show, showed that in the first paper, a fellow named Kevin Vidya at the Royal Prince Al Alfred Hospital in Sydney, Australia, took a look at um, plaques. He did plaque imaging on people that had been in, um, in a cardiology clinic just after having had an event. Here's the study itself. Um, October 2017, colchicine therapy and plaque stabilization in patients with acute coronary syndrome. Here's base, the basics of the study. Uh, they, they were able to recruit about 50 on one arm of the study and another 50 in another arm. If patients agreed to get colchicine, uh, they followed them. If they didn't, they followed them as well uh, to look and see with, um, if they got a decrease in plaque. Here is an interesting summary of what happened. Uh, they were given, the study group was given half a milligram per day of colchicine plus the op, routine optimum therapy uh, for one year. Uh, the primary outcome was change in the low attenuation uh, volume, uh, plaque volume, or LAPV. 
Here's the numbers. The colchicine therapy significantly reduced LAPV, that low attention, low attenuation plaque volume, from 15, 16 millimeters uh, in the control group versus 6.6 millimeters. Again, huge. Oh, I'm sorry, I got it backwards. They had a 15, uh, looks like they had a 15 millimeter reduction versus a 6.6 .6 millimeter reduction. Anyway, the number that you look at to see is uh, what was the probability of that happening as a random event? Eight in a thousand. HSCRP has got something to do with this because you, get, you saw a significant decrease in C-reactive protein as well. Um, again, the probability of seeing that level of decrease in C-reactive protein was about one in a thousand. So it does appear that colchicine at least uh, impacts plaque by these studies. Now, <clears throat> what about lipids, um, LDL? LDL was not, uh, was not impacted differently. So um, it doesn't appear that... Uh, that this is done from an LDL type of mechanism. Again, it appears that it's done from an infl inflammation type of mechanism using colchicine. That was the conclusion of the authors. Now, if you go back, um, there, were, um, there were editorials by our old friend, Paul Ridker. He made a couple of comments. Uh, number one, obviously, it's a very intriguing study. Um, number two, he, he made a little bit of a sideways criticism of the LAPV, the low attenuation plaque volume, and I understand why. He said, you know, the bottom line is uh, we won't know until we actually do outcome studies. And guess what? There are two outcome studies currently in progress. One is called COLCOT, uh, stands for the Colchicine something trial. Uh, and there's another study as well, and uh, hopefully I'll get some time to cover those two studies, and we'll see when they come out, if they actually impact heart attack and stroke events. Thank you for, thank you for your interest.